In today's video, I want to show you the difference between the J slice and the U slice. And I'm also going to tell you which slice you should adapt at the recreational level. But before we get started, let's talk about backhand slice fundamentals first. And there's a lot of confusion in how a backhand slice should be struck. Some people have to believe that you should slice forward as if you're clearing a table to your side, like this. In fact, slices used to be hit like this, for example, Ken Rosewall. And it is absolutely true that you can create underspin if you hit in a linear way as long as your racket face is open. Because if you strike the ball with an open racket face, you will get the ball to spin like this, which is underspin. The only problem with that is that you will not only lose power because you are disconnecting the ball from your body by steering it forward and getting it further away from your core, but also because of that open racket face, a lot of your slices will have a tendency to sit up if you hit the ball too hard and there's a danger of hitting the ball too long. The purpose of a slice backhand is for the ball to be as low as possible so that your opponent has to bend and give you an easy ball to attack on the next shot. The fundamental way of hitting a modern slice is in the following way. You have to hit the ball high to low. This is what creates slice. It's not an open racket face because players strike the ball further behind because you have to understand that the more in front you go with your racket, the more the racket face opens up. The closer you hit the ball to your body, naturally in a continental grip, the racket face will be more closed. It will be sometimes a little bit open depending on the height of the ball. But generally, it's more of a closed racket face which will result in a lower trajectory of the ball. Now, you're probably thinking, Nick, how do you get slice if you have a neutral racket face? Well, we're going to have to go from a high position to a low position and continue going low. And you can see that the ball is indeed spinning in this way, which is underspin. So when you look at high level players in the modern era, you will not see a linear slice. You will see a slice that's hit across the body in a circular way. So that is a fundamental element of a modern slice backhand. However, there are some stylistic variations among players. And in today's video, I'm going to choose three players to show you those stylistic variations. The first player I'm going to use as an example is Roger Federer, and he hits what I call a J slice. So Federer starts very high. His hand is somewhere around his left ear. He starts higher than most other players. And now Federer will have a very vertical attack onto the ball. He will attack the ball vertically like this and the racket will stop somewhere on this side. So it looks like a letter J. He starts very high, goes very vertically onto the ball and then stops somewhere around here. When you strike your slice like this, you are guaranteed to get a lot of underspin from this vertical attack. But it's not only that, you will also get an extremely low trajectory. Now here lies the danger of this slice. It's very difficult to get the ball over the net because what happens once you make contact with the ball, you're going straight down. So this requires excellent hands, excellent timing. If you want to pull this off on a consistent basis, let me try one more time. I did a little bit better there. So this is a slice that's extremely effective, but it's very difficult to pull off. A much easier stylistic variation on the slice is the U slice. And this is what Novak Djokovic utilizes on his slice backhand. And the approach to the ball is vertical, just like Federer, but something interesting happens shortly after contact. The racket goes across the body, but it doesn't continue going down quite as much as on the J slice. So on the U slice, what Djokovic does, he goes vertically down towards the ball and then levels the racket off and comes back on this side. The slice will look like a letter U. It'll start somewhere around here. Djokovic has a tendency to start a little bit lower as well, but other players with the U slice will start somewhere around their non-dominant shoulder. It will go vertically down to the ball, level the racket out, and then come back on this side and finish somewhere around their dominant shoulder. So it looks like a letter U. So naturally, the trajectory on a U slice compared to the J slice will be a little bit higher. So it's a lot easier to get the ball 
over the net. And that's the reason why I recommend the U slice for the recreational level. Not only will you naturally get a higher trajectory, but because you are going a little bit higher on this side, you will also get more power. It's somewhat similar to hitting a one-handed backhand and drawing the energy more from your shoulder. So it's gonna be not only easier to get the ball over the net, but it's also gonna be easier to apply power onto the ball if you execute your slice with the U shape. Now, how about my favorite player, Rafael Nadal? Well, he doesn't use either one of these slices. He does something that's quite unusual because he doesn't have much of a finish. So he very much depends on the pace of the incoming ball. Nadal will start somewhere around his non-dominant shoulder and he will abruptly stop the racket somewhere around here. So he does go across the body, but the racket doesn't come up like it does on Djokovic. It doesn't continue to go down like Federer. Nadal will absorb the pace from the incoming ball. He will give the ball underspin because he is coming high to low and then across, but he will make his slice movement a lot more compact than most other players. So let me try this out. Of course, it's not gonna work perfectly because I don't have that pace of the incoming ball, but this is what Nadal's slice looks like. It's an abrupt stoppage on the dominant side of the body. So here's the deal guys, it's super important not to confuse style with fundamentals. And I just released a brand new course on my website, intuitivetennis.com that you can access with a seven day free trial. And if you decide to stick with it, it's only $14.99 per month after that. And this course explains the so important difference between style and fundamentals on all strokes. So the fundamentals of a modern one-handed backhand slice is that you start high, I suggest somewhere around your non-dominant shoulder that you have a vertical approach to the ball because that's what creates underspin. Naturally, if you allow your racket to continue to go down, it will turn into a circular swing path and not a linear swing path. And now what happens on this side of the body is absolutely style. Now the style that is gonna be the easiest for you to adapt is gonna be the U style. But generally, when we talk about styles, it is perfectly fine for you to experiment. So next time you go on a court, you can try the Rafa slice, you can try the Federer slice, and you can try the Djokovic slice, and quickly you will figure out which one works best for you.